Today I am in mid Wales and I've not just come here for the stunning backdrop behind, but instead I'm going to meet a gentleman who is actually redesigning and rethinking aerodynamics when it comes to road racing and time trials. And well, I reckon you're going to absolutely love it because get this, he's even having his own handlebars made for him in Taiwan. Right, here we go. A couple of bikes left out for me to check out in privacy. Uh, I've got to say, these handlebars, they are different to anything I've ever seen before. They remind me kind of, I don't know, like a trekking bar, because they have loads of different options for you to put your hands on or anything, but they're definitely not for a, for a uh, relaxed ride, I don't reckon. This is certainly for a bit of aero gains. They are pretty long, I've got to say, so hence why they've, both of these bikes have got short stems on. We've got a road bike here with disc brakes, but yeah, like I say, big old handlebars. And then on this one, it's a time trial frame, but we've got, again, road bars on it. We've got an aero front brake. I like that, that's pretty cool. And I'll tell you what, these cranks, they are pretty short. Yeah, 155 mil cranks. I don't know what to say about this really, but let's go and meet the guy behind it, David. So uh, I'm gonna try and ask him your questions too, because I reckon I'll be thinking what exactly you're thinking. David. Great, thank nice you so you much for well, taking me to quite literally the middle of nowhere. <laughs> but we're not here to talk geography. What have you done? Well... <laughs> Everyone's going to be wondering this. They've seen the beautiful yes. shots. Yeah. Um, Tell, talk us through it. Yeah, well, as all good ideas come to someone, they, they, they came to me in the middle of the night and I was just wondering how could I get faster on my road bike? Yeah. Because I'm quite into my aerodynamics and getting faster and using technology to get as fast as possible. And I was just thinking that Obviously, it was nothing to say that aerodynamics don't matter in a road race. No. And primarily, a lot of it is down to your frontal area. Yeah. On my previous bike, I had 42, 40 centimeter bars. Quite a short setup because I got a very, for me, because I've got quite a long body. And uh, when I got in the aerodynamic position, I ended up, my, my knees were inside my elbows, my, my elbows are splayed out, and I wasn't particularly aerodynamic. Yeah. And uh, if I was trying to go for a solo effort, I'd be using up far too much energy. So mm. I thought, how can I get my my arms in front of my body into that sort of quasi time trial position and get some free speed basically. Because yeah. we see a lot of guys sort of imitating that, don't we? Yeah. You know, you see it when you watch the Tour de France yeah. or anything like that. People sort of drooping their hands over exactly. the front. And then for anyone who's tried that at home, they'll probably know it's not the most it's not the most secure. It's not thing the most stable. To, to it's be playing around. Yeah. I thought how can I do something similar to that, potentially more aerodynamic, but yet still have better control of the bike, be able to access my gears, yeah. access my brakes if I need to. Well, that's presumably how we've got to this. Now, we did obviously talk before I arrived today, and I know yeah. you have got some developments of these handlebars, yes. which I'm super interested to see. But just talk us through then this, this setup here, okay. what we've got. So the bars, we've got um, very narrow bars. These are at the drops 25 centimeters wide. Right. Um, however, they are flared, so they are about as wide as a 38, 40 bar okay. in the drops. So that gives you the control um, on a descent or if you're sprinting. Yeah. However, when you're on the tops, if you're climbing or if you're getting aero, you don't, you don't need that width because no. uh, you're, not, you're not pulling on the bars. You're not trying to get any leverage. Um, and if you see any of the World Tour pros climbing, quite often they'll have their hands virtually touching anyway. Yeah. So it doesn't, it doesn't make a difference really to go, um, when it comes down to the control of the bike. And the bars angle in slightly. So then we get a bit of overlap with the tops of the bars, yeah. which are aero profiled tiny little bit of padding, it's sort of double wrapped bar tape here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah it is. It's, it's, like a, yeah. it's like gel almost, isn't yeah. it? It's a bit like a, a bit like a wrist support yeah. for a so keyboard I've, or Yeah, a so I've made my own gel pads to go underneath. Blimey. <laughs> it's like a, another Adam yeah. Hansen I've met. <laughs> you can access your brakes in this position here. Yeah. Um, but the most aerodynamic and most comfortable position, you sort of hold onto the levers here and you can, but because I've got my E-tap here, yeah. I can still change gear yeah. with my little fingers. That's the thing. I, I guess really, when we see you know the guys like I've already mentioned in, mm. in you know the World Tour races, when they've got their hands just mm. drooped out there, they have no control. Yeah. You know, they, it's quite a, quite a movement, isn't it, yeah. to the to the actual brake. Minimal control. Um, you've got your hands here. I suppose if you hit a large pothole, or whatever, you, you could easily come off. Yeah. Um, it's quite hard to maintain that position and keep your arms in the right position. And also, you do see them that they sort of they have their arms spread at that. It's potentially not as aerodynamic as a, as a fixed dialed in position is. So yeah. get here, it allows you to relax your shoulders, shrug them in, 
and get really small at the front. Yeah. And what sort of extension then are these bars? Because they <clears> look, <throat> they, you know, they do look really, yeah. really So long. these, so a typical bar would have a reach of about seven to eight centimetres. Yeah. Uh, the reach on this bar, I think is 16, 15, right. 15 16 centimetres. So then to get within the constraints of the UCI rules that you can't be more than five centimetres in front of the front hub. Yeah. So what I do then, I couple that with a really short stem. Right. Um, I've also found if I put a long stem on this and have these long reach bars, that is when your bike starts to feel a bit strange when you're trying to get out of the saddle. Sure. So I find that the control aspect is more the how far your hands are in front of the front hub, okay. um, rather than the actual width. Yeah. And how long then? I mean, when, it, when you climb mm. on the hoods, what's yeah. that like, the feel? Is it a bit, a bit twitchy? Because uh, no, in not, my mind, yeah. because of the, the, yeah. how, how narrow they are, no. Uh, no, it's not, it's not twitchy at all. Climbing in the saddle is absolutely fine. Um, climbing out of the saddle, absolutely going for it, it feels a bit different. I suppose because the bars are slightly narrower, you have to put more of a force to swing your bike side to side. And you do feel it a bit if you're fatigued at the end of a race and you're trying yeah. to get out of the saddle. However, I've I found that you can negate that by climbing in the drops. Oh, because right. the drops, oh, because you know the drops are wide. Love, I used to love yeah. seeing pros. Style. Like, yeah, Jan Ulrich climbing yeah. on the drops. There's something so cool about yeah. that, but hard as well. <laughs> <laughs> but you've got, so on there you've got a 70 mil stem, but yeah. on your other bike there, you've got, is it a slightly different flare on the, the drops uh, or is it no, those, just my oh, imagination? Well, those bars are slightly wider. So this is a slightly less extreme. Right. So this is the bike I have used the last couple of times in road races and crits. Yeah. Um, these are three centimeters wider here, so they're 28s. Yeah. Uh, the <laughs> 28 is so, it's so these narrow. Are wide. These, these are wide. These are wider than 28. When, when I go, to, when I go to something like a 42 now though, it feels like, I bet it feels like a truck. It feels like a truck. It feels really strange. However, anyone jumping onto the bike, their first response is, oh, doesn't feel that strange. It, really? They, yeah, the, the preconception is, is you're not going to be able to control your bike. Yeah. It's going to feel really narrow, but actually it, it actually feels reasonably natural. Yeah, because yeah. for me, when I'm riding a lot, yeah. I, I don't always ride on the hoods. Yeah. I find it more comfortable just around the bend. Yeah. But I reckon just you could, there, Yeah, you can. You can ride, and that would be the equivalent to a... I'd always uh, look for my brakes. I yeah. just went to look yes. for them then. Like I was on a pair of sure old you can't old put satellite. You could, well, you could yeah. put satellite brakes in there, I suppose. <laughs> it's not a pair. <laughs> but... Um, yeah, so you could ride like that. Yeah. Obviously, you, you, you can't access the brakes and no. the gears as well. You could put um, you could put satellite shifters here, but that would actually give you an up, more upright position akin to a conservative road bike position. Yeah. I've gone for the more extreme as long as possible within the rules, yeah. um, just because I want to be stretched out and be as aerodynamic as possible. You can see I don't race anymore because I was thinking about comfort and everything like that, yeah. whereas you're just like, no, yeah. I want to go all out comfort so, aero yeah. speed. And I've got a negative degree stem on here just to counteract the fact that I've gone with a 59 centimeter frame, largest frame size, possible with the Moriarty bike. Ah, right, and what's so, the reason you went for the 50? Yeah, so I've gone for the 59 um, just so I can get long enough, because I think if I had a 54, 56, yeah. you can imagine if I was in the if I was in my uh, position, yeah. Yeah, I would then be contacting, um, and he would contact my elbow, as, yeah. it, as it would do on, on, my pre, on my previous road bike with yeah. normal bars, which is why you see people on the hoods, they have their, their knees are within their elbows, within their elbows, their elbows and their arms are out, increasing their frontal area, making them making them slower. Brilliant. Do you know what, I'm looking forward to seeing how you went from a normal pair of bars to this. <laughs> and also, I want to know more about these 155 oh, mil cranks. Yeah. <laughs> so, they're not that commonplace in, in road racing uh, around the world and in Britain. There's been some anecdotal evidence that in an aggressive position, shorter cranks open up your hip angle, uh, basically put your muscles into the more effective range of motion and allow you to lose less power when you're getting low. And I've managed to do some research and we found that with all subjects in an aggressive time trial position, um, they, they put out more power um, with the short cranks. They lost more power relative to in an upright position, going low with long cranks, you lose a lot of power. Yeah. And I found that some people maintained their power or lost less with the short cranks once they're in a time trial position. Wow. So I've just transferred that over because I'm basically, when you're getting aero, it is, it is a time trial position. Yeah. So um, you, you don't want to be compromised by uh, closing off your hip angle. It's, it's What I find fascinating is that it's kind of over 20 years on from when guys like uh, Indra, Rominger, yeah. guys like this were doing they're the riding, aero They were riding 180 cranks because they wanted to get the, the, it was a slight, slightly thawed, flawed thinking that they yeah. wanted the 180 cranks to get the leverage, but that's not that's not what you need. Um, that's only one lever arm in a bicycle. If you want yeah. if you want to get more leverage, you just change into an easier gear yeah. and uh, spin a higher cadence. Yeah. 
Right, I'm just looking at your wheels and tyres as well, and it, well, it looks to me, it, this is still what I find amazing is that so many road racers are going to wider and wider tyres. And these are what, 28s, 30s, something like yeah, that? Yeah, I mean, 28s we're starting to see here and there, but you know, a lot of riders are still stuck on the 25s. Mm. Yeah, so these are 28 mil wide uh, Conti tubeless tyres, yeah. uh, but on a 30 mil wide rim, which is pretty wide. It flattens the profile out of the tower a bit, makes it a bit wider, but it's just trying not to uh, adversely affect the aerodynamics as well. So we've got a nice smooth transition between the sidewall of the tire and the, uh, and the and the rim. Right, sat down now, and we're going to go through the evolution of these handlebars, which you've well, been involved with designing and, and building. But I mean, just for a bit of perspective, here's a pair of normal handlebars. And after playing around with David's bars, uh, that sounds a bit weird, but in all honesty, <laughs> it's exactly what has just happened. These feel massive, right? They feel so wide. I mean, these are, I'm guessing, 42s, are 42s, they? 42s. Yeah, a pair of normal 42 bar, sort of shallow drop, that compact bars. But we've got here now, well, all of the different mm. designs. So talk me through them, okay. whilst I still think that these are huge. Yeah, the not. evolution, yeah. So, so I've got on my bike. So these bars are the Nitto Rondoneur bars. So yep. these are made by a Japanese company. These are the same bars that uh, Jan Willem van Schip yep. rides and caused a bit of controversy in the World Tour for having his, ang uh, his levers angled in and being ultra narrow. Um, so I had to play around with them. Actually, this is car body filler that I was trying to work out if these were carbon bars with a nice aero profile surface, how they'd feel. They, they worked, but not brilliantly, because you're holding onto the lever here. Actually, I found that you could get quite aero, yeah. but you're putting a lot of pressure on your wrists and you had the same problem with, that your triceps would fatigue and, and, and it wouldn't be that comfy. And that's why I discovered that I need to be riding a frame with a long reach to get myself long enough to be able to um, still get the position I require within the UCI regulations. So the top tube needs to be really long yeah. rather than just having a really long stem because it's not going to be allowed and it feels, it doesn't feel right. Yeah. So then I contacted um, a tube bending company. I, I, I drew them a little diagram and said I want the bend here, I want it to be, you know, however many centimetres. And uh, it worked really well. Uh, but yeah. as you can feel, they're yeah. quite heavy. Yeah, fairly heavy. They're aren't about they? 500 grams, I think. And they're, they're actually re relatively robust, um, yeah. though I had to I had to come up with my own shims to get them to fit a standard stem because they're, not, they're, not the usual Coke can. You would no. have to put quite a bit. Yeah, there. exactly. Yeah, a couple of Coke cans, <laughs> um, and then they, they had the issue with the lever clamps. Of course, it was actually yeah. too narrow for the for the lever clamping area, so I had to I had to put a little bit of tape underneath. Yeah. As, as you can so we've see. We've gone yeah. from, well, yeah. Well, these these are 32, aren't they? they I think so. We need to get a tape think, measure out. But yeah. they're not that much narrow. No. Not that much narrow. Um, but they're a little bit narrow, but yeah. they allow you to get, again, they allow you to hold them to the levers and get this support then. Um, yeah. So you can hold the aerodynamic position. And then this is literally the, the, same, the same bars yeah. with, uh, with the shim in place there, yeah. the Wahoo mount, and then for the stem. Brilliant. Um, so um, I rode these around quite a lot throughout the winter on my sort of gravel bike that was riding around and... Uh, Did you go off road with these as well? I have done, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, and, uh, uh, it worked, it worked. Um, there's actually sort of a built-in suspension in the bars yeah. in the fact that they're so long and they flex, but... Um, <laughs> I never thought about that. <laughs> and then uh, there's an intermediate stage, which is on my current gravel bike, mm. um, which were basically these bars created by a company in Taiwan called Furriers, who's who sponsor us and they're very open to ideas um, such as this, so yeah. great for me. They made me some bars that were basically this design, but with a standard oversized 31.8 millimeter yeah. um, clamping area and obviously quite a bit lighter as well. Um, so I tried those out and they worked really well. I did a few road races with them. Um, though I thought I was trying to work out how I could improve the design again. I, I found that you had to angle the levers in quite a lot to then to get your arms tucked in. So I thought. Yeah maybe this would work. So the next generation... Um, just need to hold these up yeah. so you can see it. Yeah. You know. So the next generation are actually, they're narrower again. Uh, yeah. These are 28 centimetres at the hoods. Right. So I had two versions, the 28 centimetres and 25. So 25 was on the time trial frame. Um, that's where you start to feel a little bit impeded by the width when you're getting out of the saddle. Uh, though I found 28 to be a good balance, actually I can smash it out of the saddle up a hill in the hoods yeah. and it feels fine. But with 20, 25 That's it feels slightly... Seven centimetres narrower to what I would ride yeah. on, on yeah. each side. Where, uh, whereas 28 feels fine. So, um, so these angle inwards 
And the, th the thinking behind that was I can have the levers mounted straight. Mm -hmm. Gives me a little bit extra reach as well. Yeah. Um, but you, know, you more easily get that overlap with the tops of the bars. Yeah. And I had created flared bars so that you've got the control um, in the drops. Yeah. So if you actually look at them, they will be about the same width as a little bit, a bit, a bit narrower. A little bit narrower. Same width as a pair of 38s. Yeah, which is what a well, lot wider. Of, yeah, in fact, yeah, they are wider. Um, quite a bit wider than um, 38s in the drops. So you don't actually have the the issue of the, of the sprinting. You know, it's not it's not noodly or really narrow in the, yeah. in the drops if you're descending or sprinting. Um, it feels quite natural. Blimey. I mean, okay. So I've got to ask the question. Cycling is so traditional. Mm. You know, there's um, when I look at this. And you know, there's the Scottish link, and what I think is Graham Obrey, you yeah. know, and a guy who, as a teenager, I was looking at his stuff mm. and I was, I was amazed with. But there was such a backlash, right, from the public, yeah. from the, the federations, and all sorts like that. Have you faced anything? <laughs> I think I'd be lying if I said no. Um, the yeah, I think a lot of people don't like change, don't like people doing things differently, and uh, just because of the way it looks, it looks different. People, you know. Oh, oh, it looks ridiculous, or oh, you don't look very stylish, or who's that idiot riding the bike with the funny bars? But I think I think you need to be a bit more open-minded and think about, well, why has he done this? Yeah. There must be a reason behind it, and it's actually because I've sat down and thought about how can I make myself faster? Yeah. It's not because I want to look silly. Yeah. Um, it looks it looks a bit different, <laughs> but however, yeah. um, however, I think when I'm in that area position holding the levers and getting tucked in, I think it looks quite... It looks quite good. It looks like a yeah. it looks like a time trial position. It looks a bit different when you're climbing um, and your your hands are really close together. Granted, um, but yes. So I have faced quite a public backlash. I've had World Tour riders weighing in right. on Twitter. Um, though I've had other open-minded guys um, defending me. Uh, quite a lot of the guys from the Who Bot bike and the Ribble setup who, again, think about aerodynamics. Yeah, they they, they the have box, been. Yeah, they, they again they've been they've been defending me, uh, and then guys like Michael Hutchinson and Rob Hales, who obviously famously um, are thinkers in the sport mm. and uh, have used uh, aerodynamics to their benefit. They've actually also publicly defended me. What's next? Anything or not? Or I'm not sure. <laughs> I, I'm, I've got a day job to go back to, so I'm, yeah. I'm just starting uh, training as a GP um, here in Mid Wales, which is why we've moved here from Glasgow. Um, I've got a few more ideas. I, I think this needs to be uh, perfected. Uh, ideally, you'd make them out of carbon, have a nice flat profile, um, and then the design maybe needs to be changed slightly just so you don't have that contact issue. Um, which on one of my previous prototypes, I didn't have the issue at all. Right. But as I found when I'm riding, um, when I'm in the drops, I'll ride with slightly slightly bent arms and it's not been an issue for me. It's just, like I said, just personal preference. I've got a few more things. Obviously, I've experimented with my crank length yeah. um, and I've, I've got I've done some actual genuine research um, with that. Uh, I'd be interested to try out um, a midfoot cleat position oh. uh, for time trials um, because in theory, uh, there could be there could be a power benefit and, and a benefit to when you're getting fatigued, your fatigue, your calf muscles will fatigue less. Um, and you'll, you'll be able to transfer the power to the bike in time trial position a bit better. Yeah. Uh, for road racing, that might be that might be something that's perhaps a no-go in a road race, but for a time trial, I think a, um, a cleat in the middle of your foot might might well um, might yeah. well be an advantage. So that would be something I'll be experimenting with. Yeah, less issue with toe overlap and everything yeah. in a yeah. time trial bike. Yeah, so on a road bike, there would be, yeah, there would be toe overlap, I think. Yeah. Um, Unless you used 120 cranks, perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> now we're talking. <laughs> there we are, a little look into some aero games that maybe you could be doing at home too. Let me know what you think of them down there in the comment section below. I'm very keen to find out. And as ever, remember to like and share this video with your friends too. Don't forget to subscribe to the GCN Tech channel and also click that little notification icon so you get alerted each and every time we put a video live. For two more great videos, how about clicking on this brake lever and for the other one, on this one.